Hello, welcome to Nezzo's Bad Shop as we watch a classic car spinning out uh, and get stuck in the corner of the track. But you will notice that this car is not like any other of the rear wheel drift cars that are featured of late, except for the Rhino Max. This is uh, the, what the heck is this thing called again? Oh, yes, the Fijon FJ9. And it's a slightly upgraded version of the Dean Tech Bulldog D9, if you remember it. Hi, Ricky. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so, me and the boys, uh, I got this car in a trade about a couple weeks ago from a gentleman named John. It was going to be his first drift car, but we all said no because of reasons like this. Um, and because this car started life as a four-wheel drive car, and now it's a rear-wheel drive car. But it doesn't have a lot of angle, so we're just having fun sending it and sh me showcasing it for you in a classic, fantastic sense. And um, yeah, me and the boys spent last Saturday, pretty much most of the day, getting it running. So much so that somebody even gave it a name. It's now known as Celine Fijon. Uh, <laughs> but, as a technical showcase, it looks pretty good. It makes all kinds of noises. Um, but this car was uh, a purchase of a purchase of a purchase. So I think, I think I'm like the fourth owner of this car. As we see Ricky fixing the track, trying to get a nice gutter sendo. Oh yeah! Okay, so I'll give you a sloppy 100 for that one. Got Josh on the drive testing for Team Bad Shop. Um, so, this is mostly just a technical showcase uh, to show off this car doing a 360 slow boy entry. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is definitely not a car that's like any kind of competitive or that sort of thing. It's mostly just a showpiece. Um, but I wanted to show it off and get some nice footage of it, especially on a track day before everybody gets onto the track because it's going to get really busy. Look at the angle we have achieved. <laughs> like a medium angle. Oh, he did it. Yes. Okay, I'm counting that. We're counting that. Good job, Josh. Um, but yeah, you can see it's front motor. There's a, a lot of belts, a lot of drive shafts, and a lot of noise. But it looks pretty cool. So the biggest goal is just to get it running. Oops. And I even installed electronics from 2007 to give it that period touch. Uh, so. I'm just happy it's running, even though it makes a lot of noise. Uh, it looks it looks the part. Oh, that didn't go well. <laughs> it's okay. I shot some other footage as well of the chassis doing its thing. Look at it though. It does look good when it is drifting. It's just it's just slow because it really won't shift weight. Um, and we had to do quite a lot of things to get it to work anyway. Um, there was a lot of uh, binding in the shocks, so they didn't work. Some of the uh, screws were falling off. Others broke off inside of the weak aluminum that's in it. But, oh, nope, zero, 360 entry. Anyways, um, it's a nice car, but uh, if you're thinking of buying one, your money's better spent on something else, obviously. But if you want some kind of project or something to look very, very scale, this has that sort of look with the front motor and all that good stuff. But there's even better options like the uh, Rhino Racing Rhino Max 2, which I have one of those and you've probably seen some videos. But um, I'll do a comparison as well at some point. But on track, we know which one's better. Ooh, hey, that one wasn't so bad. Josh on the, uh, on the driving. Thanks for driving it, buddy. Um, yeah, so it's more of just a quick classic fantastic just to show them up. People have asked me all through my drifting years you know, are these good? Are they worth it? This and that. Uh, if you've got a lot of No, patience. I hit the stop button. Okay, we're back. But anyways, this car would spin out for you a lot. It'll spin out for you a lot, but that's okay because it was designed as a four-wheel drive car, like I said, but it does have all the fun elements of a real-life car. Motor up top, a belt, a belt, a drive shaft, a belt. Oh, look, look, look. A belt, another shaft thing, cup. Drive shaft into another. Oh look, drive shaft! Wow, <laughs> all the way to the rear end. So there's a lot of action going on in here. And one of the previous owners, yes, did convert it, um, but there are remnants of not so much like abuse, but more of hard driving because this drive cup here. Where is it? Let me show you. Oh, that's a lot of action seen through there. I found a screw missing in the rear dif spool differential. Uh, like I said, the shocks pretty much didn't move at all, and they they barely do now anyway, but they, they, they did like this before. They barely even moved. So there, was a, there were a bunch of issues, um, but otherwise, 
She's alive, Celine Fijon. Uh, but yeah, this is more just a technical showcase. We're going to show it off on the bench and this and that. And I'm just happy it works. So there are even cross-link uh, pieces here that were uh, linked up to the rear suspension and even the front suspension. There's one down here. I took them off because the thing actually flexes better this way. And fun fact, this thing, this car also has rear active tow, which is kind of ironic for such an old car, but it does have it. Anyways, yes. Thank you for watching. If you've got one of these things, let me know what you think. And if you have a D9 Bulldog, let me know what you think about it. And um, I'm going to bring it back here off track, and people are going to jump on track now. And um, we'll go from there. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And we might do a comparison later. Celine Fijon with another, uh, with the uh, Rhino Max. Maybe on track or off track. We'll see. We'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Bye.